I'd like to welcome you to Knox Presbyterian Church in St. Thomas's online worship service and here to the Knox Sanctuary this morning. We extend our thanks this morning to two individuals uh, who have made donations towards our audio-visual ministry here at Knox. Firstly, we thank Tony Stackpool, who made a memorial donation in memory of Marion Archer. Many longtime Knoxites will remember Marion and her family worshiping here at Knox. Marion passed away in the last month or so, and we're grateful to Tony for making that donation in memory of Marion. We also received a celebratory gift for this morning's service, a gift from Sandy Walters, celebrating her parents' 62nd wedding anniversary. So on behalf of everyone at Knox, we wish Steve and Betty Walters a very happy anniversary. We hope you have a wonderful day and we miss you. So uh, we hope it's not too much longer before we can see each other face to face again. Happy anniversary, Steve and Betty. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. A reminder that the deadline for our cookbook is fast approaching. And if you're a friend of Knox, either a local friend from St. Thomas or a friend who has been watching our audiovisual services uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, please send in your recipe. You can email it to me or to Megan and uh, we'll make sure that it gets included in the Knox cook cookbook, which the Presbyterian women have been working on. Also a reminder that we're having our non-bazaar bazaar, so it won't be in person and we're figuring out what that spirit of giving uh, sale is going to look like. But if you've got crafts or other kinds of bazaar items, not garage sale items, but church bazaar items that you would like to donate towards this sale, uh, they need to be into the church by the end of October. Then we'll be sorting through those items and deciding the best platform uh, to uh, use them as a fundraiser for our church. The sympathy of our congregation is extended to two families. We think of the family of Colin Ferguson. Colin was a member here at Knox, a member of the Knox board for many years. So we hold up Joyce and the entire family in our prayers following Colin's passing. We also remember the family of Don Houghton. Don passed away this week as well. And we hold up Ward and Sylvia and all in the extended family, uh, losing that pillar of our community uh, and a, a strong man of faith in the last week. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship as we listen together to Martin on our sanctuary piano playing Valse by Chopin.
throughout each day, each week, we are pulled in different directions. We make decisions, we weigh our choices about how we're going to spend our time and our money and our words. But this morning, we are invited to be still for a moment. We are invited to steady our minds and our hearts. Christ invites us to meet him here this morning, wherever we are. Scripture nudges us to turn our eyes to the one who made us all. So listen to these ancient words, a call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. May the peace of Christ be with you this morning. Let's worship God. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. God of hope, settle among us and within us this morning. Hear our prayers. Help us as we worship to catch a glimpse of your Son. Forgive us, O God, if our faith has become shallow. Forgive us if we have lost our way in the midst of this pandemic. Forgive us if we have forgotten what church is really all about. And Lord, turn our feet again in the footsteps of Christ. Help us in the week ahead to live lives that reflect your goodness. For we pray in the great name of Jesus, the one who taught us when we pray together to also say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is God of the Sparrow. Megan put this hymn together. She's learning some new skills. And so the images that she chose are all images from our young people's trip to Newfoundland last summer. So let's sing together, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale.
Our first scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the Hebrew scriptures from the book of Deuteronomy. These are words that were spoken to God's people as they prepared to enter the promised land. Words that uh, remind the people of faith that they need to practice their faith on a daily basis. In fact, the words of today's reading make up part of an important prayer in the Jewish life. The words are the words of the Shema, a prayer that is recited twice a day by faithful Jewish people. It's a prayer that is often uttered at the end of someone's life and children learn it as an evening prayer before they go to bed. Our reader this morning is Julie Mithril. Julie is a longtime member of Knox, and for a time she uh, was away from our church, but today, along with a few others, uh, she is joining our church family again. So Julie, we're, we're, we welcome you back. We feel like you never really left, uh, and we thank you for sharing scripture with us this morning. Let's listen to the word of God as it is found in Deuteronomy. Good morning. I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou, and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Again, Julie, we thank you for taking part in our service this morning. Well, sometimes for our children's time, we see creative works of our children. Sometimes we learn new songs, but this morning we have a question. I bumped into Amy a few weeks ago on a sunny afternoon when the weather was a little warmer than it is today. And Amy had a faith question, and so let's listen to Amy's question and I'll attempt an answer. Amy? Hi, my name is Amy and I'm in grade five and my question is why can't do God give me a dog? Well, Amy, it was great to see you that day at the park and uh, thank you for asking that question. Amy's question is why can't God give me a dog? And Amy's question is one that I think many in our Sunday school would also have. When we pray to God, why doesn't he just give us the answer we're looking for right away? We want a, a dog or a kitten. We want a new baby brother, an A on a paper. We want uh, the right life partner as we get older. We want a specific job. We want an end to this pandemic. Why doesn't God answer our prayers the way we want and when we want? That's been a question that people of faith have asked for centuries. And other people of faith have wrestled with it and helped us understand. Maybe it's because we are looking at prayer 
with the wrong, through the wrong lens. If we think prayer is like going to an ATM machine, we put in our card and an answer, our money is spit right back out to us, we are probably going to be disappointed with prayer. If we think God is like going to McDonald's and placing our order at one window and then driving up to the next and having it handed to us, well, we're probably going to be disappointed. Nowhere in scripture does it say that prayer is like ordering fast food or going through the bank drive through No, in scripture we're told prayer is a lot more like a conversation. It's a lot more like talking to people. So asking God for something to drop from the sky is not usually how God works. Prayer is about listening, just like any good relationship means that we ask and talk, but we also listen. Prayer is about us putting some work into the actual answer. So why won't God give Amy a dog? Well, I think maybe it's because Amy's not asking the question in the right way. I think God knows that even a family pet is a responsibility, needs a bit of work. And so I think, Amy, God wants you to talk to your parents. I think he wants you to work it out as a family. And it might mean that you get a dog, or it might mean that you don't. But ultimately, God, I think, is more about the conversation, and prayer is more about the conversation. It's more about us listening for an answer. And maybe the dog you get won't arrive until you're a little bit older. So I don't know if that answered your question. I think God could give us what we want, but generally that's just not how prayer works. And I hope that in the coming months you'll keep talking to your parents about that dog. Keep thinking about what kind of a responsibility it might be for you and for your family. And maybe, maybe you'll be able to settle on some kind of a solution so that you have a furry friend in your midst. Our next scripture comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 4. So again, let's listen together to the Word of God as it is found in Luke's Gospel. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. We thank God for this reading from his word. Now let's listen together to a solo sung by Estelle Brown in our sanctuary. It was recorded just a few weeks ago, and we're grateful to Martin and to Estelle and all of our soloists for providing us with their ministry of music for these online services. some 
Sometimes we can't see how they could Struggles that break our hearts in two Sometimes blind us to the truth Our Father knows what's best for us His ways are not is too good to be unkind so when you don't understand when you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand trust his heart Don't live as those who have no hope. All our hope is found in Him. We see the present clearly, but He sees the first and last. And like a tapestry, He's weaving you and me to some I'd like to extend the thanks of our congregation to Estel and to Martin for our special music today. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may this message be in the name of the Father and for the sake of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, there's a, a best-selling book. It's called The Happiness Project. And there's a line in that book that has made it on posters and artwork. People put it up on Facebook and on Instagram. The line is, what we do every day matters more than what we do once in a while. What we do every day matters more than what we do once in a while. During this time of pandemic, that's a helpful quotation, I think. It reminds us during this time when so many big moments have been canceled or postponed, weddings, parties, trips, that what we do every day, the simple things of every day, our daily habits, they matter more than what we do once in a while. And so this morning, I thought we'd spend some time thinking about habits. 
not bad habits. We all have our fair share of them, biting our nails, drinking too much coffee, ice cream before bed. No, today we're going to focus on good habits. That reading from Deuteronomy talked about the ancient Jewish people being called to a habit of prayer, a habit of remembering who their God was and how God saw them through the wilderness on the way to the promised land. And in our New Testament lesson, we see Jesus gathering with others in the synagogue. We're told it was his custom to gather in the synagogue. It was one of his habits. This morning, we're talking about good habits. Now, let me tell you, if you do a quick Google search, you'll find all kinds of advice on this topic. I found just in a few moments the following headlines when I searched for writings about habits on the internet. 32 healthy habits to change your life. 10 habits you should take up if you want to make it to 100. There's a host of quotes from Stephen Covey's collection of books, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Highly Effective Couples, Highly Effective Families, Highly Effective Business People, the list goes on. There's even one called 100 Tiny Ways to Improve Your Life. Imagine trying to remember 100 habits that you're called to put into practice in order to make your life richer and fuller. Well, this morning I thought we wouldn't try to memorize 100 habits. Habits. We'd just look at five different habits, five habits that Jesus incorporated into his life. I'm not talking about his ministry, the focus of his ministry. You know, we know that Jesus spent time teaching. We know that Jesus spent time healing people. We know that Jesus spent time performing miracles. I'm just talking about habits, things Jesus did on a regular basis, things that were incorporated into his life. Now I need to warn you, this is a bit of a grade school sermon. When I was in grade school, when I needed to remember things, I often set them to letters. I remember our piano teacher teaching us the names of each line in the treble clef according to the acronym, Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge. E G B D F. Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge. Those are the names of the lines in the treble clef. And in middle school French, I remember my French school teacher teaching me Mrs. Van de Tramp. Every letter in the name Mrs. Van de Tramp stood for a different French verb. And the Mrs. Van de Tramp verbs, those are the verbs that are conjugated with etre rather than avoir in the past tense. So today we're looking at an acronym for the word habit habit. And as we think about the word habit, each of the letters in that word are hopefully going to remind us of a different habit of Jesus, a different habit that maybe in the week ahead we can begin to incorporate into our own lives. We're going to talk about them not in the order that the letters appear, so the first letter I want us to talk about is I, I, in community. Jesus over and over again makes it his custom, his practice, his habit to worship God in community. Now for us here in these COVID-19 times, that's been close to impossible. Nevertheless, in this strange online community that we have, where on Sunday mornings or midweek, we join in a common experience of worship, we believe that that's a habit 
that makes our life richer and fuller. It grounds us for whatever life throws at us during the week. The first habit we're called to is to worship God with other people, to have our faith resonate against others, to understand God in the context of a church family. Just as we're called to community, so also are we called to cultivate some time apart. So the A in habit, it stands for apart. Over and over again in, in scripture, we encounter Jesus going up on a hillside to pray, out in a desert to struggle, into a garden, weeping tears of blood. Jesus pulls himself away from his ministry and his life to rest and to reflect. So also as people of faith, we are called to cultivate some time apart. And I don't think there's one way to have quiet time with God. I know there's people that go for a morning walk. That's when they turn things over in their mind. That's when they feel like God is closest to them. I know others that set aside a specific time and a cup of coffee and do a Bible study every morning. I know others that pray as they go to sleep at night. I don't think there's one way, but just as we're called into community, so also, I think, we are called to cultivate a habit of being apart, to withdraw from our lives and our busyness and turn off our cell phones and just be in the presence of God. The next letter is the letter eight, hospitality. Hospitality, and I would add the word service to that, hospitality and service. Jesus makes it a habit to not just think of himself. Jesus makes it a habit to have his eyes wide open, looking for ways to meet the needs of others. Sometimes that's Jesus scrambling to ensure there is food for a multitude. Sometimes it's standing up for someone who's weak or vulnerable. Jesus makes it a habit to be a person of hospitality and of service. The fourth habit is the habit of thanksgiving. If you read through all of the Gospels, you'll see whenever Jesus breaks bread, he offers thanks to God. He's often reminded that, and reminding others that the blessings of this life are not of his own doing, but they're a gift. I think during this pandemic time, it's easy for us to not practice the habit of thanksgiving. It's easy to focus on what's missing in life rather than all of the blessings that are all around us. So I wonder if we're called to cultivate a habit of thanksgiving as well. And finally, the letter B for build relationships. Jesus makes it a habit to build relationships with other people. He's not too busy to attend a wedding in John's gospel. He's not too busy to spend some time with his friends when they're weeping. Even as he's preparing for his crucifixion, he sits around a table with his friends. Jesus makes it a habit to put people first and not just the great masses in need, but the people he's closest to. Building relationships is a habit that he cultivates in his life. 
I'm hoping in the week ahead that we might think on the word habit. Think about the good habits that Jesus demonstrated in the four Gospels. I wonder if we can prompt ourselves to reflect on those habits and begin to cultivate them in our own life in the week ahead. Today is a, a special Sunday for us. Well, mostly it's difficult to welcome new people into our midst when we're not worshiping together in person. We are excited to welcome four new people as members of Knox Church St. Thomas. One is Julie, who read our scripture reading earlier. And as I said before, she's a really a longtime member who just took some time away from our church and is now uh, expressing interest in being back in our church family more closely. So it's really a welcome back for Julie. I'd also like to extend our welcome to Joanna Van Wyck. Joanna just began coming to Knox uh, back around Christmas time. And on our last Sunday before uh, the pandemic closed our worship spaces, on the very last Sunday, Joanna told me, a tear in her eye, that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. You can imagine my uh, shock, but also uh, my empathy for her, having endured that diagnosis myself. And so over the summer, we've chatted back and forth and she has uh, gone through uh, surgery and chemotherapy and is, is uh, beginning radiation and will soon be all finished her treatment and is doing really, really well. She comes to us uh, from a Presbyterian church uh, east of St. Thomas in Sarnia, I believe, and uh, she's a South African by birth, and we're just uh, so delighted, Joanna, to welcome you into our midst, and we're grateful. Uh, we've been praying for you, and we're grateful uh, that you have got through the worst leg of the journey and uh, are now recovering. We'd also like to extend our welcome to Liz Webster. And Liz comes to us from Westmount Presbyterian Church in London. She's been uh, taking part in our worship services online uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I have many memories of Liz from many years ago, and I'm grateful that she'll be part of our church family. Uh, she loves crafts, and I think she'll be welcomed warmly into our midst when we can finally meet together in person. And finally, we welcome Anna Maria Tol Tolgas. And Anna Maria, I have such a terrible time pronouncing your last name. Anna Maria was a, a committed member of the Hungarian Presbyterian Church, and that church closed a few years ago. She was supposed to join our church in February this year and was ill on the Sunday when she was to be welcomed in. And so today we welcome Anna Maria formally in, as a member of our church. If you're someone who's been thinking about church membership and are wondering how we can make that happen during COVID-19, I, I invite you uh, to give me a, the church a call and uh, we'll arrange a time to meet socially distanced or to talk uh, over Zoom. Uh, and uh, if you're someone who would appreciate some classes to grow your faith as you think about uh, what church membership is, uh, I know we can find a way forward uh, to do that. Now let's join together in prayer as we welcome these new members into our church. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks that your spirit is at work in our church even when we are apart from one another. We give you thanks for each of these four women and for their unique gifts. We thank you for your call on their lives. Gracious God, may they be a blessing to our church family, and may we be a blessing to them. Holy God, hear us now as we pray for our church. We ask for wisdom and guidance in the days ahead. We pray for all of the churches of our city. Keep us safe, O oh God. Make us strong. 
Remind us again that faith is bigger than any building. We bring this prayer to you in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is Those Who Wait on the Lord. And the images are images from across the ocean, from that Isle of Iona, where we often uh, borrow worship liturgies and beautiful words uh, inviting us to worship and uh, calling us to prayer. So let's sing together, Those Who Wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew the strength. They shall rise up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, in your way. Those who serve the suffering world shall renew the strength. They shall rise upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, in your way. Those who live the risen life shall renew the strength. They shall rise up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, in your way. Those who love the mystery shall renew the strength. They shall rise up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, in your way. Those who die on the march shall renew the strength. They shall rise up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, in your way. Well, because I know that Steve Walters appreciates my jokes more than most, and because it's Steve and Betty's anniversary, I had to tell you a joke about a farmer. Here it goes. So there was a farmer who raised watermelons. He was getting frustrated. There was a group of kids who lived nearby who regularly were creeping through his fields at night, stealing the, the largest and ripest watermelons away. Maybe they were selling them at the side of the road. Maybe they were eating them. He didn't know, but this farmer was frustrated. And so he devised a plan. He got out a can of black paint and a large sign and he painted on the sign, one of these watermelons has been injected with cyanide. One of these watermelons has been injected with cyanide. That'll do it, he thought. Just the sign, that'll scare them away. So he went out in the field and he hammered in his sign, went home. A few days later, he went back to inspect his watermelon field. He walked out into the field and he noticed that every watermelon was where it should be. The ripest and fullest watermelons were still there and he smiled. Walked up and down the row. And then he realized someone had placed another sign out in his field. A large sign with black paint, not dissimilar from the one he had posted. The sign read, 
now there are two. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And now let us go in peace and may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with each of you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, starting next week, now that it's getting so chilly that our outdoor coffee breaks are usually not happening, starting next Sunday after church, we're going to have Zoom coffee again following the worship service, about a 20-minute visit with some familiar faces. If you'd like to be a part of that, don't hesitate to drop me a line and I will send you an invite. But to get you in the spirit of... Uh, having coffee in the afternoon during COVID-19, or maybe a cup of tea in the afternoon. Our last word this morning comes to us from Gord Walden. Gord is a member of our choir and uh, he's been up at his cottage since he returned from Florida back in March up on the Bruce Peninsula. And uh, he's put together a little song inviting you to tea next, uh, next Sunday afternoon. The last word from Gord Walden. Sing a song of long ago When masks are worn When the wind would blow And people'd stop and say hello Less than six feet from you Would you like to come over for tea? With Mavis Curry and me, it's a real nice way to spend the day with Knox Presbyterian on a lazy Sunday afternoon in 2020. Sing a song of long ago when kids could grow and go to school the air was clean and covid free and folks were nice to you would you like to come over for tea we'll do it virtually it's a real nice way to stay in touch and still be social distancing on a crazy Sunday afternoon with pandemic anxiety.